What's up everyone? Today we're diving into an OWI live stream. Something a little bit different, but this was a Q&A that OWI hosted. They took questions from the community on their Discord and did a live stream on their Twitch channel to answer some of those questions. So we're gonna take a look at a few of those questions, see how it aligns with some of the stuff that we've talked about already on this channel, and of course, give some opinions and thoughts on that. So if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, leave a like and drop a comment down below with your thoughts on the Q&A, and let's get to it. So there was a bunch of questions asked. I'm gonna focus on some of the ones that I think actually indicate something about the future of squad or what we can expect to be added or built out later. So the first question was about the Javelin. Let's take a listen to the answer as to whether this is something that OWI is working on for squad. Yeah, no plans for it to come in immediately. Uh, obviously the big challenge there for anyone who knows how it works is that it's a specifically top attack anti-tank guided missile system, uh, which makes it really difficult to balance because it is essentially a real world delete key for, for <laughs> armored vehicles because you know it hits them in the top where they're least uh, protected. Um, so we've still, you know, we've talked about it in the past and we've toyed around the idea with maybe making it an emplaced weapon so that, you know, at least it has the trade-off of not being uh, a portable weapon for infantry uh, so that it has a static position and it has that trade-off. But yeah, still not something we're planning anytime soon. Got yeah. a, a lot of other stuff to get through. So the TLDR here is balancing. The weapon system itself is pretty OP. But this is something that I thought we might see with the PMCs, just to give them something to operate against IFEs and tanks. Considering I don't think they're going to have vehicles that are comparable to those in their lineup. Next up was a question about the optics that came with the new b Bradley that came with version 8.0. So while this Bradley doesn't have toes, it does have a whole box on the side of the turret that seems to be for optics. However, it's non-functional. Here's what Baron the lead game designer for OWI had to say about it, along with some talk about thermal imaging for vehicles. The intent for all of the recon vehicles um, is that we want to give commander the ability to uh, hook in and possess like the commander camera for recon vehicles. Um, a lot of these vehicles in real life actually have a specific sensor module that allows you to do this. So. Um, on the Coyote, for example, it has a giant antenna mass that actually comes out of the back. Um, unfortunately, that requires a lot of effort to go and model and animate all that stuff for all the different reconnaissance vehicles in the game. Mm -hmm. So for now, it'll likely just be giving the commander the ability to kind of hook into that commander camera on the vehicle uh, for the recon vehicles. So they'll be able to sit there and scroll through cameras and, and get live updates. Uh, from wherever the reconnaissance vehicles are positioned. So that's kind of our immediate intent with the reconnaissance vehicles. But yeah, in the future, as it relates to thermals, uh, we know vehicles are in a, in a position where they're really strong right now. So we don't want to make any decisions that are going to push that further and, and make it become a bigger problem. But in the future, something we've toyed around with is, is adding thermals, but maybe only to the commander seats. Right. Um, and only when. Uh, that commander seat doesn't have like a weapon system. So in the case of like a, a main battle tank that has a remote weapon station on the top, uh, we might give them thermals, but you can't use it at the same time as you're using the weapon system. Um, and that would be so that we're introducing that capability, uh, but we're also increasing the amount of teamwork and coordination between that commander and, and the gunner or the driver. So the commander has the ability to see targets more easily with the thermals. Um, but not necessarily the gunner. And, you know, that information has to be relayed from the commander to the to the gunner. So I was really curious to see if the commander of the Beefus would have some additional options in terms of their optics, whether that be thermal or something else, to see a little bit further into the battlefield or a little bit differently than maybe the gunner could see. Pushing communication and stuff like that between the commander and the gunner, similar to the points that Baron made around thermal imaging. Now, if the commander of the round or team could potentially tap into this, that's pretty interesting too. I just wonder how different that view is going to be or what it can provide above the communication that maybe that team in the actual vehicle could provide to the leads and command chat. The next question that I thought was interesting was the conversation around game modes getting some updates, especially Insurgency, a game mode that seems to be a little bit neglected along with several others. Obviously, in typical pub matches, you're gonna play random advance and secure, invasion, maybe advance and secure, and every so often you might see a territory control pop up. But it is rare that you see some of the other game modes. Here's their response to if Insurgency is going to get some sort of update. 
Yes, I guess yes, there are plans uh, with with a few other uh, of the other things that we've spoken about. It's always a question of when and the resources that we have uh, working on stuff currently. Um, it is it is on our roadmap at some point, not this year, but um, it's something that we want to get back to. And and uh, well, game game modes in general is something we want to get back to eventually. And and rework rework old ones, add new ones. Uh, that kind of thing. So that's just another uh, thing that the team, the team in Offworld, talks a lot about uh, and gets excited about. Awesome. Yeah, there's there's a lot of work to do with uh, some of our more neglected game modes. Um, that if anyone's familiar with the game, they know what they are. Uh, yeah, Insurgency was a big one that the design team is really passionate about redoing. Um, but yeah, kind of like Otzer said, uh, things get moved around and reprioritized a lot. Uh, so we haven't been able to work directly on it yet, but hopefully in the near future. Much like maps and factions, it's always good to see game modes introduced or reworked for better play. Ideally, we'd see some more game modes added or at least updated so that we can have more diversity in what we're doing, especially with the unit system and seeing how some of these units could tackle things like territory control or various other game modes. The next question was about the commander role. What might be changed? What new assets might we see? Let's take a listen to what Baron had to offer. Our intent is to rework the commander entirely at some point in the not too distant future. What we want to see there is every battle group's commander has a totally different range of uh, tactical and strategic abilities that they can use. Uh, most likely they'll have to um, unlock them, kind of like a tech tree, as the round progresses, and they'll have to use resources to call them in. Um, so that, that's kind of our intent. Uh, what all those different uh, commander abilities look like, that, that's really going to come down to uh, what we can reasonably do for the MVP of that when we get to it. Um, but, you know, pretty much what you would imagine, lots of different airstrikes, di different types of artillery, um, maybe different types of uh, passive abilities. So maybe commander is able to unlock a special role for the team that they don't have until that point, or they can unlock uh, additional vehicle spawns, maybe one-time vehicle spawns for particularly powerful vehicles, uh, maybe supply drops, uh, maybe giving their team extra tickets, maybe giving their team the ability to capture points quicker, maybe certain factions have abilities to do things like a mass uh, wave spawn on their position. Uh, so yeah, we, ha we have a giant brainstorm of all the things we'd like to do. Now, Baron did go on to say that many of these ideas are things that they've had since the very beginning of the commander role. Now, they aren't working on these yet, and there could be a difference between the intent that he's talking about and what actually releases. I've talked a little bit about some of the things that I hope to see for the commander role, like passive abilities that Baron mentioned. So other things that can go into how different units or different factions will play the round given some of these abilities and including the ability to actually unlock these as rounds progress. I think that'll be really interesting to see. It gives more importance to the commander role, but also more importance to the fact that the team has to work together to get the assets that a lot of teams are gonna to wanna to utilize, especially as they're introduced across a match as the round progresses. Now, the next question I want to highlight had to do with time of day and weather for maps. One thing we know for sure is we don't want to add this as part of the voting process because that just bloats that, how long that whole process takes between um, rounds. And even though you know server owners can configure how long they want each step in that process to take, we don't want to add lots and lots of steps for them there. Um, so we have talked about potentially enabling server owners to just uh, allow a random uh, lighting condition or, or weather uh, to be loaded into uh, uh, a map when they go into it. But that's still kind of far off. We, we still need to get a lot of other things out of the way, like standardizing our lighting conditions. Like for me, it, it still drives me crazy in the game when on certain lighting levels for certain maps, you know, you have these really dark black shadows at the bottom of a bush or in the corner of a room that someone can just hide in and, and camp. And you really don't have any counter to it. It's just like they either... Uh, shoot you and you know they're there or they don't shoot you and you don't know they're there it's it's not very uh it's, it's not a not a smooth experience so you know we need to standardize all that stuff across the board there's also you know certain maps that uh, the lighting is such that i don't know everything just looks too bright and looks too washed out uh so there's some 
some standardization we have to do there with the lighting and, and the weather layers, as well as making sure that certain weather layers don't um, tax performance even more than others. So right. in the past, we had like rainy layers and you just see your FPS tank on those ones. So there's some other problems we have to solve before we can get to the point of considering of uh, setting up alternates and then letting those alternates be selected. I think this is actually a really great answer for a couple of reasons. The inconsistencies between different maps and the lighting is something that can be very frustrating. There's also several maps that are just sort of washed out or just don't have the same contrast or color that other maps have. So consistency would be helpful and it's understandable that consistency is necessary to be able to provide lighting changes or differences in time of day that some of these rounds are being played. That's something I would like. I would like to see more night layers or evening layers or just morning layers with variations in the lighting just to give you a little bit of a different look at that map. Additionally, being able to have rain or some sort of weather effect is also pretty cool and kind of dives into a little bit of that immersion that you might face when actually just walking through some of these maps. Now, of course, it wouldn't be much of a Q&A without somebody asking about what factions can we expect next. There was a pretty lengthy answer given to factions and how OWI sees factions and how they get added, along with the fact that they have a pretty massive list of things that they want to add faction-wise and vehicle-wise or asset-wise to the game. But it is confirmed that the next faction to be added will be the private military contractors or PMCs, which we've seen teased in some newsletter posts or content that OWI has already released. Now the next question was about close air support helicopters and anti-air weapons and the answer to what we should expect from that will be next. Let's let's just say it, cast helis and anti-aircraft weapons and anti-aircraft countermeasures are coming. So we're just at the front end of that production cycle for working on that. Um, and you know, depending on how things go, we might hit our anticipated delivery date or it might get pushed back a little bit so i don't want to commit to time frames right now but that is uh just beginning to be actively worked on that was the entire intent behind uh reworking the anti-tank guided missile system there was a component of that where we did want those missiles to just act and behave a little bit different and nuanced and have pros and cons but the main effort there was to kind of untangle some of the tech in that underlying system so that it would enable us to have uh, like heat-seeking lock-on anti-aircraft missiles. I think this is a pretty huge thing to talk about for Squad because I do think it is an opening up another layer to what Squad is based on just how gameplay operates. You may have that extra helicopter helicopters that actually have a purpose beyond just transportation, providing that close air support in certain areas. How is that going to work and how are they going to dodge some of the anti-air weapons that may exist on the field? But there's going to be a selection of people that are going to be dedicated to these new roles added into the game. And there's one more thing sort of attached to part of this conversation that I wanted to mention because I've talked about it and it's something that I thought would be coming to squad maybe a little bit sooner than the PMCs, but we'll see. And we're actively talking with Tactical Collective, the modding group, uh, about France. Um, and That's exciting. Uh, I know plenty of people will be happy to hear that. Yeah, well, when and, and, and all those questions we'll have to figure out, but we're actively talking to them about, about that, um, as well as the Bundeswehr mod. So we're talking to... To, to modders about what what all this all this stuff means and and trying to work with them on on getting you guys that content in the in the vanilla game so so obviously we've already talked a little bit about what factions we thought might be coming to squad the france mod is one that does seem pretty much complete and might be something that could be added into the game sooner than later i kind of thought we might see that before the pmcs but maybe the pmcs will be next and then we'll see france who knows but the fact that they also brought up the German mod is also interesting. I was hoping to maybe hear about the Japanese Defense Force, but maybe that's not quite ready. Regardless, it seems like there are three factions that we should expect in the near future for the game, which is exciting enough. Now, there were many other questions asked of OWI during this stream, and I want to highlight a few things that they had brought up or answered just to give coverage, but you can always go down to the description below and I'll link the VOD at least as long as it's available for you to review. First of all, Fast Ropes was brought up, a question that has long lingered amongst the community and there was no real update here. It's something that they mentioned gets them excited, but there's not really any work being done on that. There was also a question about increasing population servers, but that it is a question for really optimization and how they can make the game perform better, generally before adding more people to a server. 
Another question was about Squad 44 and the damage system they have for vehicles. Could that be something that can be ported into the game? While OWI did say that there might be some features here and there that they could pull into Squad, that the vehicle system wasn't something that they were necessarily going to be able to do because of how far it was from Squad's gameplay. There was a mention of a local teammate radar, something that might reduce TKs, but also inform players of their friendlies nearby. It's not something that OWI is working on specifically, but it does seem like they're interested in helping educate newer players or players generally about positioning and things like that. That goes into other questions, especially one about a new stat board at the end of rounds to give more information about what is actually happening, where tickets are gained or lost during rounds so that it can better educate teams and players. And of course, it wouldn't be a Q&A without some sort of mention of the infantry combat overhaul. Largely, this is a conversation that just won't seem to go away and continues to exist pretty much everywhere. But I think C did a pretty good job of addressing this conversation, really trying to guide more of the focus around tweaks and things like that that Odebi wants to do to things like weapon handling, moving forward based on the new infantry combat overhaul system and how it operates now. The ICO update is about a year old almost. We were playing playtest this time last year for it, time to move on and a part of that was also a conversation around the realistic feeling of holding a weapon and how suppression operates versus giving that experience in the game which i think was very interesting i think one of the examples mentioned was basically while you don't necessarily get suppressed the same way you do in the game versus in a real life scenario the suppression is causing you to react to something whereas just running through a bullet storm wouldn't exactly be the most ideal it gives you some sort of value on doing things differently because of scenarios in front of you Additionally, there was a mention of map topography, something that I would like to see added to the game, especially when you pull up your map, even if it's an overlay, which OWI mentioned it could be. I think that's a really important thing to have so we can understand where hills are, how deep some water is and stuff like that, especially as some of the map changes have updated, especially the way they look. It would be great to see a little bit more detail around height change, terrain change and things like that. Now, one other big topic shared and discussed during the Q&A would be the move to Unreal 5. I don't think that there's a ton for me to say here. If you watch the VOD, you'll hear bits and pieces of how that is being worked on or basically researched. And it seems like some of the team for OWI, especially like the map team or an asset team, may be looking at different things and how that's gonna operate in the future, as well as understanding how that might improve performance, because that of course is a conversation topic within the Q&A, which is optimization, something that they find one of their biggest challenges, but something that they are always gonna work on, especially with some performance issues that have been identified recently with lower frame rate and how that operates in game. So overall, I think this was a really cool opportunity to kind of listen in on a Q&A. I do like the fact that live streams may be back for OWI, and I hope they do more of these moving forward with a variety of guests so we can get some insights into what to expect for the game itself. Maybe the only thing I felt like was kind of missing would be to know what maps we might be expecting soon, although we did get plenty of information around the direction OWI may be headed in terms of factions. And of course, I'm excited to hear about the commander role, seeing some updates. I hope that's something that gets kind of added to the pipeline relatively soon. Close air support helicopters and anti-air weapons is something I'm just really not sure how that's going to work out or how it's going to be played out. Not that that's a bad thing. I'm just really curious. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this quick look at the Q&A. I just wanted to summarize it for folks that maybe have missed it and try to raise some awareness over the fact that this is actually a thing that happened. So don't forget, hit the subscribe button, leave a like, drop a comment down below with what you might be most interested in from this Q&A, and I'll catch you next time.